Container fields can store files like PDF or Word documents, pictures, audio, video, and even interactive PDFs. But when working with container fields, it's important to first decide how you're going to store the media. And I've gone ahead and summarized it right here for you, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit. There's basically three methods. Storing the file internally, as a reference, or as I say, my favorite way, externally. Now, if you're going to store it internally, it's a lot of advantages to it. It's easy because everything's in the same file. You know, the, there's one FileMaker file, and all those graphics or PDF documents that you're storing are inside FileMaker, so you have a single file to move around. It makes it easy. But the downside is it makes your file much bigger. You don't have to worry about getting above the FileMaker largest file size because it's 8 terabytes. But it does make backup slow because it has to back up a larger file and decreases portability. You can't move it from one destination to another unless you have like an entire hard drive, especially if you have a lot of you know files in there. Now I used to love storing files as a reference. This means that you don't actually store the file in FileMaker, you just store a path to it. So you have no overhead as far as file size. It's really negligible at that point. But the problem with this is that those paths are easily broken. If people start inserting files and pictures from their own hard drive in this server and that server and wherever, they get moved or the FileMaker file gets moved and they can't find each other necessarily. So what you want to go ahead and do is avoid references unless you can control it. So in other words, only things you put in there inside of that container field are you know, files and pictures from a particular server that people can always mount because you don't want people to have something from their hard drive and this guy's hard drive and then people go, oh well it's not available. That's because you don't have that guy's hard drive mounted. So it can get to be a little difficult. That's why my favorite method for storing is external. This is an option inside managed databases which we'll go ahead and take a look at and it solves all the problems you know, backups, broken links, and even remote access, which I kind of, you know, uh, you know, talked about a little bit there, meaning that if you're accessing the solution from, you know, remotely and or from anywhere on your, your network in the your LAN, anywhere, it's going to know where it is because it stores the files on your server. And if your file's local, then it stores it on the local hard drive. But really, we're concerned more with, uh, you know, a networkable multi-user scenario. And so it stores those files on that FileMaker server and, and you know where that FileMaker server is, no problem. It actually makes a copy of whatever they're you know, inserting into one of these container fields all the way over to your server so it's available to everybody. So that's my favorite method because it solves all your problems. So let's go ahead and take a look at the structure of this. Now I could have used a, a, just a, you know, a one table and container fields, but I want to make it a little more complex because there's a few extra things you need to know when you store in a, in a portal here. Um, it's virtually the same, but if, there's a few extra little things you need to find out about. So let's look at the structure real quick. We'll go to Manage Database, go into Relationships, you can see we have Contacts related to Containers. It's a one-to-many relationship, primary key to foreign key. You have Allow and Delete on there. So therefore, you can see that we have this blank row here. And you can see it has this little placeholder text in here that says click here and then insert. Now you can choose picture or file here at this point. This is probably the easiest method for implementing container fields for users because you don't have to do a lot. All you need is placeholder text. Let me show you what I mean. You come over here to your container field. You go ahead and look at the data tab. And you can see here the placeholder text appears when that is empty. So if we go into browse mode, click here, insert, let's try a file here, and we'll do this FileMaker PDF here, you'll see that now this row has that information about inserting, we can certainly go ahead and insert again. But it was very easy to do. I mean, and most people understand that dialog and can work with it. Now you also notice that a bunch of fields appear here. That's some simple stuff. I just wanted people to focus in on the container field. And you'll see that here we have this simple little formula that says, is empty, the K of contact ID, then hide it. So in other words, as soon as you insert 
your container value that will appear. That makes them focus in on the container field. And also hide it when you know, you're in find mode. That's really the best choice there with those because you can't really search them. So if you go in here and you go into find mode, you notice that these fields disappear also. In fact, the global or the container field disappears. Only thing you can really search is this right here. So we'll go back to browse mode. And then you'll notice it automatically puts in a title here. Now you don't need to do this, but it's kind of nice. You maybe don't want to rely on this or people want to override it. But I like to auto enter that. So we go into manage database. And it's very simple. Go into our containers go into our title, double click on it, and you'll see there in the auto enter section, the calculation, we simply refer to the container field. And what it does is it translates that container from a container value, because it goes, oh, well, that's a text field. I'm just going to take the name here and put it in there, and then, of course, you can override it. So that's probably the easiest way. But, of course, sometimes you want to control what's going on. You want to have P scripts and things like that to run them through the process. And we're going to show those, but let's first show what happens when you turn on external storage. So we're going to go into here into Manage Database, go into our containers, go to the container field, go into Options, go to Storage, and you'll see Stored Data Externally. Click on that. You have Secure, which means that people can't go to the server and open up those files or pictures or whatever they might be on the server or you have open storage which mean they could I usually go for secure storage but let's choose open here and you notice that there's a bunch of different locations here that automatically puts in here. you can calculate this location if you want in fact you can pop this up and get locations from here But let's click OK and we'll find out where this comes from and you notice that because we already have something stored it's going to transfer it it's going to transfer it out of FileMaker into the external storage. Now we're going to go check this. It completed that. But let's see on here, Manage Containers. You'll see this is where that path is. You can add new ones if you want. That's the one that was in that pop-up menu for the secure. Now I'm going to hide this. And you'll see now we have a folder. Now this would normally go on your server if we weren't in a single user solution. Containers, Containers, Container. You can see FMP PDF. It's there from where I installed it, but it copied it over to here. So that's pretty cool how, the, how that works. And I want to make sure you understand. Now if you go ahead and decide inside of Manage Database, go ahead and switch it back or switch containers or external storage off, then it's going to move it right back. It'll ask you, it'll transfer. You can do this manually, but it, it's pretty good about doing this for you. Now let's go ahead and click this button. This will walk you through the process of inserting a picture or file. So I'm going to choose a picture this time choose my picture and you see it goes right in there it's pretty simple so you can walk people through the process and have a little bit more control and make it a little bit easier than going up to the menus it's up to you it's really depends on what kind of solution who your users are well, let's take a look at these scripts we have one that opens it one that exports it one that emails it and one that well that says email that's a, that's a mistake right there we need to come in here and go to our tooltip and change that to delete. Kind of obvious with that trash can, but you know sometimes people make mistakes and now the tooltip should look better. So now let's go ahead and try these out. Let's try opening up. And you see it's going to open up preview and there's that file. Pretty cool. And then we can export it of course. Now if we export it, it's going to go ahead and write over the existing one. So I'm going to take these and throw them into the trash. And while we're here, we can take a look that all this stuff is gone now out of this. There's nothing there. In fact, we can take this folder and throw it away as well. Now, if we come back in here into our container, now we can go ahead and export it. It asks us where you want to go. This is a, a dialog. We'll show you how it works. We select. I'm just going to stay at the desktop. I set that as the default. I'm going to select that as my location, but you could go anywhere you wanted to. It tells you, hey, you exported this to this location. It gives you some feedback. And you can see it's right there again now. So pretty cool stuff. We'll move on and see what we've got. We've got email, so we can click email. Now the cool thing about this is it attaches it, but it never puts it on the desktop. You don't ever have to see this file, and we'll find out how you do that. And then, of course, you can delete. That's pretty simple. I'm not going to actually delete it, but you get a nice little message here. So let's take a look at those scripts in case you want to do this. There's the insert one. Now that's the one right up here at the top. 
So it's outside the portal. So it says, hey, do you want to do a picture or file? Right? Picture, file, or even cancel. Notice that cancel is a third choice. That means that it's not accepted by this if statement. That means that if you choose cancel, it doesn't do anything between the if and end if because we have message choice one and two. Then we go to the object, calendar portal. We've named that portal. It's a best practice to go ahead and name portals because if you have two on your layout, it doesn't know which one to go to. Then we say go to the last portal row. That means it selects that last portal row. Then we either go to field and insert picture or insert file, which has the option to specify the field. And then once we're done, we commit the record. Now I do that because I, you know, you may want to come in here and decide not to allow people to click in here. You may not want this option for them doing it manually. So you may allow them to go ahead and, uh, you know, prevent access to this. Simply come in here, go to your data tab, and say don't allow access in browse mode. Simple as that. Okay, back to script workspace. Our delete, pretty simple. We've uh, covered this in other videos, but you know, here's a nice little message with uh, quotes around the container name. It converts it from the container value to text because it can't display it and show custom dialog. Otherwise, they hit yes, it deletes it. Pretty simple stuff. Here's what we really want to look at, though. You're open, and of course, you're exporting your email. First thing we do when we open is we want to go ahead and set a variable, a local variable, dollar sign path, to get temporary path concatenate with the container which will take that name and convert it to text and that's it it puts it in a folder that's hidden to the users so it doesn't clutter up their desktop or some other folder and that folder that temporary folder is automatically deleted each time you quit out of FileMaker so it cleans things up and then you simply say export field contents you specify the field that will be your container field but more importantly you put in the path, not an actual path, but dollar sign path, and also click automatically open so it opens it up for you so you can see it on the screen like we saw. Let's go to our export. Now we've turned set error capture on because it makes a difference here. I usually turn set error capture on no matter what, but I only turned it on this one because it really makes a difference in the script, and that's going to be when we go ahead and possibly cancel this dialog right here. That's why we test for error equals zero here. If it's zero, do this stuff. If it's some kind of other error, don't do this stuff. So we go ahead and say, show me the directory dialog and allow the person to select that directory. I make the default your desktop. You can see that right there, right in there, that part. So it starts off at the desktop. The variable is here, dollar sign $path. And then we don't have anything really in the dialog. Well, we did say specify export location, but you can do anything you want there. So it simply throws up a dialog, says what folder do you want it to go into. And then if it passes this test with the error, then it sets the dollar sign path to the path that got up here in the get directory plus the name of the container field. Then it exports the field contents, same as it was essentially before, except we don't have the option to automatically open up. Right? Remember, we're exporting here. We don't want to open it. We just want to export it. And then finally, we show a custom dialog that says, hey, we're done. We exported it with this name. And then I add on the path here with a couple of returns after it so they can see exact, you know, sometimes people don't think about where they're saving things, and it's a nice thing to remind them. And then we have our email. This also uses the temporary path, so I won't open it up. Just sets it to temporary path. You don't, you know, you're sending an email, you don't want to clutter things up. Then we export the field contents, again, not opening it up. And then we simply send mail. There's nothing on here except the attach file has dollar sign path in there. So that's how it opens up an email and attaches that on there. Now there's some important things to know about interactive PDFs. We haven't covered them yet, but they're pretty cool. So what you can do, we're going to go into manage database, create, and we're creating this in the contacts on purpose. So I'm creating a new container field. We'll hit create, click OK. I'm going to go into layout mode. I'm going to double click on the instructions here, change it to that container field, go to browse mode, click in there, insert. Now you notice the PDF's not available. Well, why is that? Well, you have to come in here into your inspector and come in here and look down here and turn it on to interactive content. Now, start playback automatically means, well, if it's an MP3 like a sound or something like that, it'll automatically start playing it. Now we can come in or click in here and you can see insert PDF is available. We can come in here and 
locate that FMP install. Now the difference here is you see this is a file over here on this one. This is interactive so you can actually see what's in there. You can interact with it in many different ways. Now you may be thinking, oh cool, we could do that with the portal. But you can't do that with the portal, unfortunately. You'll see why. Of course, it's not available if we try to insert. So you go, okay, I'll go into layout mode and set that up as interactive and then go back to browse mode and then click in there and try to insert an interactive PDF. And it won't let me because you can't put an interactive PDF inside of a portal. It just doesn't work. You know, there's not enough room for one thing to see it and it could possibly slow things down. So that's why they don't allow that. So there's your tutorial on containers. Hopefully this gets you started on using them successfully in any way you want. This should be a, a really a basis for starting your own solution for creating a knowledge base or, or storing information on records uh, for contacts. Who knows what? But certainly FileMaker works really well with media such as PDFs, uh, you know, files like uh, Word documents, uh, anything like a picture or a video or an audio, all that stuff it works great with.